Thank you for listening to the Content Magazine Podcast, Conversations with Silicon Valley's Creatives. I'm Daniel Garcia, your host and the cultivator of Content Magazine, published by SV Creates. What broke your ear, bro? Yeah. Cool. Hey, welcome to the Content Magazine podcast. I'm Daniel Garcia, the cultivator of Content Magazine, and we are here today live in our sofa studio with Kung Fu, the legend, Kung Fu Vampire. That must have been a typo. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Thanks for meeting, and I'm excited. you got a show coming up this Friday. Yes. But before we get there, we have to talk, of course. Um, you grew up in San Jose. You're a San Josean, yes. right? And yeah. I know you rep San Jose, even like with your videos, neighborhood, right? Taking the shot oh, all yeah. over. That was really super cool. That was cool. fun. That yeah. was the first, actually, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. But so, uh, yeah, What's where would you grow up? Like, what part of town and stuff? So, it's um, kind of interesting. I did move around as a kid. My parents are pretty young. They're 20 years older than me, which yeah. I can't imagine having a kid at 20. Right. They did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> so, there was moving around a little bit at the early age. So, I lived off Coyote Creek. Okay. Um, then with my dad off Round Table Drive in Edenvale. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah. Near, near Seven Trees. Yeah. And um, then I ended up uh, kind of an interesting little pocket of San Jose, which I guess it's central San Jose or south San Jose, but it was Pearl and Branham okay. in apartments there for yeah. most of my childhood. Yeah. Then south San Jose, and then when I moved out at 19, I moved to Cambrian. Yeah, okay. And, um, so you've done the Yeah, San Jose. yeah. So I've kind of lived everywhere. Now I live south downtown. And um, there was only one time I moved out of the city. I still had my San Jose house, but I bought a place in Ben Lomond. So I lived oh, in really? oh, seclusion in the mountains. for five years, absolute yeah. seclusion in Santa Cruz Mountains Wow. Um, in a canyon and uh, wrote probably my best best music there. So is that like, did you do that intentionally so that you can kind of go up into like to have this writer space? Was that, and did you have a studio there, like recording studio type thing or how did so, you? So, um, it was a, there was a personal reason, kind of a criminal reason why I moved. Okay. Honestly, like I needed to get out of the city a little bit. Yeah, sure. Um, but at the same time, uh, I was looking for an investment property. Oh, you know, yeah. It was yeah. when they were handing out balloon loans yeah, and stuff sure. to goons like yeah. me. They yeah. were like, sure, 20-something-year-old <laughs> guy, we'll give you a house, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And they just handed me a house. So yeah, yeah. we were going to eventually, I was looking out everywhere. I had friends helping me look and uh, was going to do Merced for, oh, for oh, um, hmm. rental property. Yeah. Well, I drove out there in July. Yeah. It was about 115 degrees. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I said, no way, yeah. man. Yeah. So I thought Santa Cruz Mountains would be good. Yeah. So it ended up being where I lived, and I loved it. Yeah. So that was a – what time – and that was a creative yeah, season Yeah, it was during you? the Dead Sexy era, which if people know, that's my most probably famous album, mm. which uh, it's a girl upside down on my lap. Right. She's naked. It's when I was bald with the suit on. Yeah. And that album cover ended up making um, – Rolling Stone's top 200 album covers of all time. Oh, wow. That's cool. I think it was like 190. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah but, it, but it was in there. It was in there, yeah, yeah, which yeah, yeah. I thought was amazing. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And so that was that era. Yeah. It was a lot of stuff going on at the time. A lot of change happened in that five years. Yeah, so. okay. And this is about what year-ish? Did we just I think. Uh, so this would have been like, oh, 2006 to 10. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, cool. Six to eleven. Yeah. So let's get. So I w- definitely want to get you to talk about your career and the changes and stuff like that. But um, let's talk a little bit about the the persona that you've created, right? I mean, you've created this an artist. I mean, you are kung fu vampire, of course, but it's uh, it's not your given name. It's not your given idea. But you've kind of like developed this artist that's kung fu vampire. Where did that come from? I know, like you. Had, Kind of joked around with some friends, I guess, in your backyard about kung fu and vampires. Yeah, but, definitely. Yeah. That's that's pretty much the the direct origin. Yeah. Um, some buddies of mine who were in a, a band here in San Jose. We all had a band together prior to two thousand one, mm-hmm. and um, I was gonna basically we were chilling in the backyard. Yeah. It was a really hot summer day, twilight hour. The sky was orange. I had a little Japanese garden back there. <laughs> And they're both very creative guys. And one was like, hey, man, we should, you know, we're drinking IPA, smoking weed, whatever. One's like, hey, man, we should do a vampire movie back here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we should do a kung fu movie back here. It'd be cool, like a little short film. And I think either one of them or both of them at the same time light bulbed. And one of them was like, dude, kung fu vampire? Yeah. And he's like, dude, you're totally the kung fu vampire. <laughs> and that stemmed from lifestyle. I was black hair, always you know, wouldn't come out till 5 p.m. Yeah. You know, night owl. Yeah, okay. So into kung fu culture, 
did kung fu for a short period of time. Yeah. Was all into Zen. My whole house was Buddhas. Yeah. I really was seeking to like get to a Zen kind of kung fu level of place. A lot of times people often just associate the word kung fu with fighting right. and martial arts. Right. But kung fu, the word actually means time and effort spent toward enlightenment. Hmm. And I really resonated with that, being yeah, like cool. a dark person yeah. at the time, being into goth, being into um, Danny Elfman, you know, orchestra music. Yeah, yeah. It just, I resonated with everything hmm. dark. Yeah. And, and so I sought out the, the light. Yeah. So it became yin and yang. And there's oh, no okay. cooler yin and yang yeah. to a creative than kung fu and vampire, right? <laughs> yeah, right. And for yeah. the record, I'm before Blade and I'm before Kung Fu Panda, okay? <laughs> yeah, we did this in 01, <laughs> okay? And I love both of those things, although I've only seen part of Kung Fu Panda. Blade <laughs> is the only other kung fu vampire. Yeah. So then you – but you really – I mean, you, so you had this kind of conversation with your friends and you like – took those elements of your life and you really have jumped into the character. I mean, like back in those early days, like you had head shaved, you were, you know, completely white faced and you had contacts in your video, you know, yeah, contact yeah. lenses in and like, you know what I mean? So um, what do you feel like, uh, like what was the reason to go kind of like that far into it? And how do you think that even shaped the, the music that you were making? I love that question, man. I don't know that anybody's asked it in that way. Thank you. Um, so when they said you're the Kung Fu vampire at that moment, I yeah. didn't actually take on the name. Oh, okay. It was we more were, like the band or something? Kind or? of. I was yeah. going to put out an album. Mm -hmm. I had this producer. He's a boom bap producer, you know, right? A backpack hip hop, like an East Coast hip hop producer who had reached out and said, hey, I really want to make an album for you. Yeah. I want to work with you. And I was already talking to him about this at the time. So... I was going to be Al Mind or with my band at the time, LSP. Hmm. The album was going to be called The Kung Fu Vampire Satire. Oh, and okay. it was going to be a gothic orchestral themed Asian instrumentation like Zither, Kodo oh, wow. album. That so it's cool. going to be a boom bap album with Zither and Kodo beats mm -hmm. and gothic beats. Yeah. Him and I started getting into this project, and it took way longer. We thought it was going to take six months. It took two years, Ooh. two and a half years. And he was just such a perfectionist. Yeah. And during the course of that, I became a solo artist. Um, did not have a fallout with those guys. They ended up playing in the band when it first started. Um, and the Kung Fu Vampire name just... It just stuck. It's catchy, yeah. And I just became, so it was at first the Kung Fu Vampire. Okay. I went by the Kung Fu Vampire. Yeah, yeah. And we had Kung Fu one word and Vampire another. Okay. And then by the time the album dropped, it was Kung Fu Vampire. We were just like, no, it's, it's no the, you're just Kung Fu Vampire. Yeah, yeah. And that was that album. And if you listen to it, it's called Blood Bath Beyond. It came out in 03, <laughs> 04. Um, it is half orchestral dark beats half kind of the Asian style beats. Yeah. And so from there on out, I've been Kung Fu Vampire. Yeah. And the look, everything, my vision totally. was to create a live band that didn't sound like a live band, that sounded digital. Yeah. Hmm. Whereas a lot of the hip hop where they tried to do live bands back in 01, it sounded sloppy to me. It was sure. like rock, funk yeah. with a guy yeah. kind of not really rapping, you know, I hate to use the Fred Durst thing as an example. <laughs> Although I think he's cool now, actually. Uh, back then, I thought he was super awful. I just didn't like that style. I yeah. didn't like rock rap. I, he gets my respect now, but I just didn't like that. Sure, sure. And I wanted to create a very um, technical lyricism meets live orchestra. Yeah, yeah. And I just, the contacts, all that stuff, I was just into it. Yeah. I, I don't know that anybody was doing it. The only person I saw was Marilyn Manson had the one contact. Right. And I just said, man, I just want to be this evil emperor it's just what I felt inside my veins and yeah, in my yeah, soul. And yeah. I love doing it. And so then when you would go to write then, I mean, you had to kind of, um, so you had internalized or kind of like this persona, the Kung Fu Vampire, Kung Fu Vampire. And then that kind of shaped, well, everything, the artwork, the graphics, the stage, the sound. I mean, like there was a whole, you know, it, I mean, it's very crafted. I mean, I, I really admire, that's why I really admire about you, not just the music, but the artwork that you do for your covers, that your glasses that you wear, you know what I mean? Like there's definitely, you know, we were even talking right before we went on like kind of like the, the branding or the, you know, the content creators and stuff. You've kind of have done a great job of take, making a brand, right? But how does that, once you kind of like came into this kind of thing, 
how did that really affect the lyrics that you were picking to to do? Did that did you like was there certain things you was like, no, that's not the kung fu vampire? Was there any of that kind of stuff going on? At the beginning, um, I've always been very against campy type stuff. Sure, you know, because um, we had a more horror image right. than the actual sound, and so totally, yeah, it, it brought in horror fans, right? And so there's just so much confusion, and yeah. I, and I I am a victim of it too when I listen to music and I see an image, right. And then it sounds different. I, I still mm-hmm. correlate it with the look. Totally. I go, oh, that's rock because they look this way. But you listen right. to it, you're like, that's not really rock. It's EDM. Yeah. yeah. But with us, um, we had a more darker sound yeah. than lyrics. The sound was about as evil and maniacal as it got. The lyrics are pretty PG-13, barely rated R. <laughs> um, so I wasn't really into um, always having that kind of lyricism. But yeah. it just, after the first album... It was kind of like a free for all. I'm like, we're doing funk songs, we're yeah. doing like ska. Fun. I mean, not right. really ska, but just like whatever. Yeah. And now it's it's gone into so much whatever. That it, well, that's the thing. I mean, like you would be labeled in those earlier days horror core or something, and it and it wasn't. I mean, it no, was it funk. Never was. Yeah, and... it was funky live band jamming out. We had guitar solos. Yeah. What had happened was, which was an actual blessing, a huge blessing. We were so ahead of our time and so obscure, man. I mean, I'm wearing an emperor gown painted <laughs> with five girls and five guys on stage doing orchestra with hip hop. I mean, it was yeah. just so obscure. Yeah, yeah. Um, we just were so unlabelable yeah. that I found success amongst weird people, you know, people who are into goth, industrial, yeah. trippy people who were like, oh, I like this. Yeah, you know? yeah, sure. But it wasn't until the horror core fan base saw. What, what we looked like and was like, yo, this is like our crazy doppelgang cousin. Like, what yeah. is this? Yeah. And although it didn't have the same sound, it had the look. Yeah. And so they adopted me and pulled me in. Yeah. And that's what helped kind of help elevate me to be able to actually tour and do things like that. And then yeah. one of the huge bands in that genre literally saw my very first music video a week after it dropped. I was at the Ben Loman house and they said, is anybody here know who this guy is? And they called Tech Nine. They called people, and someone in the Insane Clown Posse office said, "I know who he is. Yeah. I can get a hold of him." Yeah. They asked me out on tour, 2010. Yeah. And the rest is history. Like yeah. I went out and played 48 dates to three to four thousand people every single night, and that fan base lost their shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they were like ripping their hair out, tripping because yeah, yeah. we were not influenced at all. By that genre, yeah, 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 being from San Jose, coming from yeah. Latin culture, yeah. coming from yeah. lowrider culture, which yeah. is where we're from. That's where I'm yeah. from. Yeah. You know, yeah. we don't see juggalos here. Yeah. This is yeah. not a. We don't see ICP fans. <laughs> I had never seen that. And in fact, I bought an ICP album in '99 because back then you just bought the new CDs that came out in rap. Yeah. There was only a couple. Yeah. Say so like it's Friday, Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday back then. Let's go buy the new record. And I bought it. I thought it was okay. It was yeah. pretty good. And never heard of them ever really again. Yeah, hmm. interesting. And they're huge. Yeah. They're huge. What it's would you be, Lynn? So what were some of your main influences? And maybe even continue now that, you know what I mean? Like for music, you're like, oh, man. Are you almost even admire, do you know, admire in the sense of like, oh, I wish I could do that, but I know that's not my thing. But like, well, I love that. Well, that that's great because like I like Reverend Horton Heat. Okay. But I'm about as far from that style as it possibly gets. So that's yeah. an artist that I look at and go, ooh. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. be nice in my older years if I could be <laughs> like a, a rockabilly guy, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, But it's just not my lane whatsoever. Yeah, like sure. not a single fan of mine would like that, right? <laughs> but I also don't make music for the fans that I have. They just like what I do. Right. And so what I'm doing is any type of hip-hop, pop, EDM, dark, yeah. very light, funky, commercial, trap. Yeah. All those, a lot of gangster rap is in my stuff, you yeah. know? But um, I was influenced by... Danny Elfman, you know, I liked, I liked Edward Scissorhands soundtrack. Mm. I liked doom, 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 <laughs> doom, 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 yeah. and I wanted to put trap beats to that. Yeah. Doom, tch, kern, doom, doom. That was my. Oh, it still gets me. I yeah, get yeah, goosebumps yeah. talking to you about it. Like yeah. I want that sound. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we had that sound, and now we still implement it a little bit. But I loved Nine Inch Nails, Ministry. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to bring like an NWA, hmm. Run the Jewels. Obviously, later in life, I became a fan of, like, Run the Jewels and stuff, right? But, um, like, NWA Busta Rhymes meets Nine Inch Nails. Yeah, okay. You know, yeah. the roots, if they were gothic, 
Right. You know, that was yeah. like my early when I was a kid. Yeah. Cypress Hill, EDM. You know, yeah. like those are like things that yeah. influence me that I'm still very like, oh, that's, that's still in me. I still love that, yeah. you know. But now my influences have changed. You know, it's for me now, it's pieces and fragments of things that I hear that I go, this is what I want. Okay. This distorted, sure. really mixture of like high quality sound lyricism simplicity things that are catchy right you know i don't i, I try to walk this fine line yeah. of like enjoyable music yeah you know I want so you're now because now you're much more into the artistry right in the beginning it's like well it's definitely the artistry, but it's the music of the expression but now like you've you have enough experience to notice the different nu- nuances of a recording or a a backbeat or something like that, right? Yeah, we're yeah. very hands-on. So my yeah. partner, Action Paxton, he's my drummer, mm-hmm. engineer. He uh, masters and mixes every album. And then this newest album, he produced eight of the 13 tracks. So yeah. this is very heavily his thing. And he's been with me 13 years. Yeah. We go through each track, even if someone else produces it, we lace that Kung Fu Vampire sound on top of it. So if they give yeah. us a simple hip-hop beat yeah. most people would be like this is great let's rap over it yeah we go no 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 let's strip that we need a deeper sub we're gonna add some yeah some violins yeah okay i'm gonna sing a four-part harmony we're gonna bring in you know so yeah yeah that's cool yeah i think you know for me now it's it's just i'm influenced by me you know yeah. that's our influence <laughs> now like outdoing myself yeah you yeah, know yeah, just yeah. kind of like bringing a better version of me yeah. each time yeah you know? now when did you transition because in like you know You've had the head shape, and then you moved, and then the hair came out, grew. <laughs> the makeup came off, and, you know, what, what was the reason for that? Why did you kind of change that up? Great question. So on that 2010 tour, a lot of people think I shaved and did that look a lot longer than I did. Um, when we first started in 01, I actually had long white bangs and slicked back black hair oh, with really? the contacts. Oh. It was short-lived. I'll show you some pictures <laughs> later. Um and then I was doing bald with the, with the uh, Mandarin collars. Yeah. Always had the spike and the yeah. goatee. I yeah. had like a brocho with the, you know, a Fu Manchu, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but no paint. I had the contacts early oh, on. Okay. And then one time, this is crazy. Now I remembered because you asked this, we played Ruby Sky in San Francisco and they were supposed to get me the porcelain paint, like the light, the pale paint. Oh yeah. They got the white oh, okay. paint and I said, <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> just do it. I just, I just did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I put black around my eyes and the contacts of my bandmates, all girls were like, bro, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. And I did it from then, I don't know when that was, maybe 06, 07, to 2010. Yeah. And when we got out on that tour, the band was called Twisted. We got out on that huge tour. They invited us out to, to perform with them as their support act. Yeah. I came out around the curtain in Buffalo, New York for the first show. And there's 2,500 people and like 85% of them have white clown paint on, right? Or different types right. of paint. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. And they just went wild and it was yeah, great. Yeah, you like totally fit in. <laughs> but I was like, after that tour, I said, well, that's their thing. I was doing it because I didn't think anybody was doing it. Right, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I didn't realize there was this whole genre that did a thing. So I said, I'd rather hang out with the fans I don't want to spend 45 minutes before, 40 minutes after, right. taking it on, taking it off. Yeah. And I just said, I'm just going to be me. I'm just going to do me. And I slowly stripped it away. Yeah. And then 2010, we got pregnant with my daughter, who's now 12. Mm-hmm. Um, I said, I'm going to grow my hair out until she's born. Hmm. And I grew a beard for the first time because yeah. I always just had yeah. brochos and goatees. Yeah. Yeah. And I grew it out and I was just slicking my hair back and rocking a beard. And I said, Nah, I'm not going to cut my hair. And my mom goes, damn, you got nice hair. <laughs> Why have you been shaving your head for a decade? Because I did. I shaved it for a decade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I think a couple other people were like, damn, bro. It is good hair. And I'm like, all right, let's just leave it. I, I am envious. It. And then uh, it just became more like, let, I only want to focus on the music. I don't want to spend yeah. any time painting, doing anything like that. Sure. I want to be focused on my yeah, health, awesome. the music, yeah. and killing it for these these yeah. listeners and supporters. Yeah, that's so, awesome. That's kind of where that transition came. Yeah. And then this haircut is actually zero maintenance. This is, I wake up, this is it. <laughs> there is nothing in it. You know what I'm saying? That's, this, this is there. That's good. That's good. So even with that slick back hair, you had to put gel in. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And even that, I was like, nope, no more of that. Yeah. So then I was going to ask you too, because you brought up your daughter too. How, being a father, how has that kind of affected you and your art? Besides letting your hair grow. 
Yeah, I mean, I definitely still write dark songs. Yeah. So you would think one would be like, oh, it's time to clean it up and not do that. But I know how to distinguish the art from reality. Yeah. And uh, other than homicide, pretty much everything in my music is 100% facts. You know what I mean? <laughs> other than blatant homicide, which yeah. happens in my songs. Um, but, you know, it, I'm sure it softened me a little bit, you know, and it made me think before saying certain things. Mm. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And there's definitely some songs that I don't want to say I regret. But there's some songs that if I came out with today, I would 100% be canceled yeah, for. If they sure. came out today, yeah. which in turn would probably make me more popular. <laughs> yeah, right. right? I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it has changed. I mean, like, even like I lot. watched uh, Eddie Murphy's Raw. Oh, and I was like, he would I, be screwed. Oh, I was like, I was blown away of like, oh my gosh, like, I can't, I didn't remember that he brought up these topics in that way. Like, whoa, this is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know so, Patrice, the comedian? Uh, yeah. Patrice. Um, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. He was super cancelable. He passed away pretty young, I think in his late 40s. Oh, yeah. Huge comedian. He was a big guy. Yeah. Um, he was so, like, jaw-droppingly cancelable. Everything came out of his mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I digress in the sense that, I mean, I notice most of these guys who get cancelled, they still pop after a few months go by. Yeah. They're back, yeah. you know? So. But what, I think, too, like, in, like you can't be cancelled, I don't think, for saying what you did back in those days and the culture was a little bit different. You know what I mean? But yeah. Yeah. And then like, you know, when I first came out, it was even different. When I first came out, I would get anonymous emails and, and messages on Facebook um, from Christian groups and things yeah. saying you're a devil worshiper. You're a horrible person. What you're doing is pushing evil. You know, you're, this is awful what you're doing. And then now that stuff's pretty diet compared yeah. to like what's happening now, even in mainstream. Like yeah. I can't even compare sure. to trippy red or cardi b or I, I spy some of the stuff they say is so much worse yeah. than what horror rapper kung yeah. fu vampire was saying well i remember being young and like uh crazy train by ozzy osbourne oh, came out yeah, yeah. and it was like so hard and so bad and then all of a sudden you listen to it and i was like listening to it at that age it's like these lyrics are not bad at yeah, all PG. yeah he's yeah, not yeah. even singing he's actually singing about even says like listen to my words and you know what i mean and yeah. it's like wait a minute and then now you listen to it, it's like pop. It's not even hard metal. <laughs> yeah, everything yeah. is just, you compare it to time and you go, oh man, yeah. what were we thinking? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And now I don't feel like I'm really ahead. I feel like hip hop caught up to my sound, whereas back then we were so far out there and ahead. Yeah. And now a lot of people are doing even weirder stuff than me. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I think some of my stuff is kind of commercial sounding. Sure. You know? What would you say if you look back kind of like at your catalog and even with your new stuff that you're putting out, what is something you really like, yeah, I'm like really proud even like a, a line or a, a lyric or something like that he's like yeah you know man that was really cool i mean i'm sure there's a lot but is there anything that stands out that you just kind of go like dang i really like that like i'll give you an example like when i i, I have this one photo that i did i was shooting street photography and it was a happy accident i was shooting these people and this girl who's standing there like looking and the shirt says she's there it was kind of like a I don't want to say a halfway house. It was like a, a home for people that uh, have learning disabilities and stuff like that, right? And I didn't. I'm taking pictures. So they, ha they have these interesting looks on the street. And the shirt says, we're all going to be okay. But I didn't see that in the moment. But after now, it's like, oh, my gosh, that was such a great moment. So do you have anything like that where it's like you this line came out and you're like, oh, man, that's just like coalesces a coolness? Well, there's this, I've had such a long career at this yeah, point. Right. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I remember being – considered a new artist not that long ago or a young kung fu and now i'm like oh man this is over 20 years i mean it's even longer it's like 23 years you know um i played at the playboy mansion and that just that memory was yeah. like wow we played at the playboy mansion yeah. at a playboy mansion party outside on the grotto yeah. that was pretty amazing but you know i wrote this freestyle on the last album and it was recorded we, we mm. i recorded it just on my phone yeah and it was absolute 64 bars of fire. Mm. And it made the song. Yeah. And I went in the studio and re-recorded and uh, something I made up off the top of my head. Yeah. She said she liked cannabis and live music. Try to twist words together like a Rubik's. And it just kept going and going. Yeah, yeah. And it was 64 bars. A normal verse is like 16. Dang. So it was like, you know, um, four verses in one. Yeah. And it made the song. And the song's called Rubik's. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but you know... It's it's little little clips here and there of things that are just like wow. But the coolest thing I ever did was two nights ago. 
Oh yeah, it was probably the biggest thing I've ever done. Yeah, that was so. This that was the la- other than what you're doing in, at the Ritz. That was the last part of your tour. So we played a festival. I flew out oh, to yeah. um, Thornville, Ohio, a place called Legend Valley, where they do Lost Lands and all these massive festivals. And I played this festival called the Gathering of the Juggalos, and they had legends like Sugar Hill Gang, mm. um, Arrested Development, Sponge, lots of rock groups. Different. It's um, very vast. Uh, from metal, Dropout Kings, to hip-hop, to rock. And I played late at night on the first night, basically second or third to last artist. Mm. And I got to play in front of 8,000 people. Wow. And they were very moved. My energy was there. Yeah. It was insane. It was yeah. recorded professionally. It was right at twilight, so as it got dark. Oh, nice. yeah. And um, that was gonna, that's going to forever be uh, a crazy moment for me. Yeah. Because it took years yeah. to gain 100% love and respect from that audience they yeah. don't they don't just give it to anybody yeah and they knew every lyric i wow. could just hold the mic out they just sang the songs yeah. you know it was yeah. great that's cool you know is that the largest crowd that you've done eight thousand people i think so eight thousand is a lot i've of been on that stage before maybe in front of six thousand yeah. as a guest appearance yeah and i played to like you know four or five thousand out there before yeah quite a few times this was just like a c yeah you know this was kind of as far back as you could see and yeah. up on the hill and around How, the corner. How's that like then? I mean, like you're standing there, 8,000 people, and hold on. Are we all okay? So then how, how is that like then? Like you're there, 8,000 people, cheering, singing your own songs, you come off stage, come back, walk on the streets of San Jose, getting your Nirvana's coffee, and like three people, well, maybe 10 people here recognize you, right? Like, like what's that like? What's that do to your psyche and your and stuff like that um i'll tell you what i've never signed and took photos that long after that set you know yeah. i went to the merch booth and i think yeah. it was four and a half hours straight oh, i think i might have damaged my bladder i had to go to the bathroom <laughs> the whole time and i was like i'm not stopping for these people their their heart and soul their yeah. excitement to see me yeah i mean one of them brought an urn uh with the ashes of what my biggest fan who passed oh, during wow. covid of covid oh wow um there was just love so and connection. tears and, and hugs and yeah. photos and children who came to see me 13 years ago who are now 6'4", football players that are 20 years old. Yeah, that yeah. came and saw me when they were seven. Yeah. And so that that's crazy. Um, then coming back to San Jose, I do love it because first off, the weather. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. um, and the weirdest thing is the last like four years, I can't even go one place in San Jose without someone being like, yeah. hey, I know you yeah. are, fist bump, right? Yeah. And we don't, we're not really doing anything out here. So yeah. that feels really good, you know, yeah. that I'm not like playing bars, playing clubs, doing hosting things. Yeah. And there's people who are just like, I know who you are, yeah. you know, and it, yeah. it's really, it's cool. And it's people who are 20, 13, yeah. 40. Yeah, yeah. Whole spectrum. Like, yeah. hey, bro, I saw yeah. you when I was a little kid at Cactus Club. I didn't play Cactus's Kung Fu. I played... um Zoe. It was Zoe right after Cactus Club. Oh, so around 2000. Remember. Okay. There was a small window. It wasn't as good. But they're like, I saw you when I was a kid. And this is like a guy who looks older than me at this point. He's like, got gray hair. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But they were probably four years younger than me at the time. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But they're like 17. I'm 21. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it, it's a great feeling, man. And like yeah. we're at a pinnacle right now. This is just such a huge pinnacle for us um, to be playing the Ritz, headlining. Yeah. My first San Jose show in four years. Wow, it's been fun. And um, yeah. some awesome people like San Jose Foos and different blogs are posting for us, yeah. which is very, yeah. it feels good, man. Like yeah. I've worked so hard. Yeah. I joked uh, about, you know, some people not wanting to give me my flowers in this city. And I said, hey, what do I got to assassinate a president? And right. What do I got to do? Yeah. I charted yeah. on Billboard. <laughs> I've played in front, I'm touring different yeah. countries. I'm touring continents. Yeah. We've done it all. What do you think that is? What What is the... And that's because it's a kind of a common thing for someone, an artist from San Jose, a, a, all different genres, not necessarily getting the recognition here. What do you think it is? Is it just, is it just the demographics? It's just the geographics? What do you think that kind of plays into that? I think, first off, I don't fit into any community. You know, okay. the lowrider community, Latin community knows me. All these different, the hip-hop, the backpack community, the old rap community, the gangster rap community, the promoters, they all know me. Yeah. All the legends, all the rappers that are legends from this city, and I can start naming them off, they would call me the king. They would call me the legend. And that, to me, matters more than anything. Yeah. They've opened for me. Like, so you can be like, he's yeah. not a legend. What about so-and-so? I'm like, that guy's open for me. opens for me. Yeah. Like, these people show me respect. Why can't you? Yeah, these yeah. people you respect are showing love. But I think what it boils down to is um, 
they're only showing love to those local guys and wanting to push those local guys because those local guys haven't blown up yet. Yeah. As soon as those guys blow up, right. it's going to be F them. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, so-and-so's. That, turn, he's not, turn their back yeah, on Yeah, they us turn their way. back. They, they yeah. like, want to hold San Jose rappers down. Yeah. And they won't take the time to even look me up. They'd rather go on a post and say, who? Yeah. What? Like, if you post this and a rapper, somebody sees it that's, like, a fan of this other type of rap. They'll be like, who's Kung Fu Vampire? Yeah. Just go type in famous rappers from San Jose. Yeah. I'm going to be the first person that pops up. Then Tracks a Million, then Snow the Product, yeah. then Drew Deasy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And these people don't never heard of me, and that's okay. It's okay. This is why we're doing this Does podcast. That hurts your pride just a little bit, though. It used to. Yeah. yeah. Now I laugh because I just yeah. played in front of eight thousand people who right. know my lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it hurts because I yeah. feel bad for them because they're not going to pay this small ticket fee yeah. to come see a show that is going to be so lit. Yeah. There's going to be crowd surfing, fire. There's going to be yeah. everything short and of the lineup, absolute pandemonium. And the lineup is great, too. I and mean, the Chow three Main, artists I have yeah. are absolute yeah. killers. Yeah. Chow Main, Cola, and Yo Is yeah. are absolute stage killers. They're phenomenal artists. Yeah. Handpicked, all three of them, for a reason. Yeah. Um, Action Paxson will be spinning. We'll have a special. Um, he's a very unknown artist, and he's amazing. Dr. Caddy Wampus, he's a DJ, EDM DJ. Hmm. Then we have Mighty Mike, who's um, DJing for one of the artists, Chip DeVille and Dufunk, all legendary, very, very prominent yeah. artists in the city, DJs. Yeah. Yeah. But what we're doing is special, and we just want people to be open to it. You can say who in the comment section, but just go look. Just yeah. go look me up on Spotify. Yeah. Yeah. You know, We've done a lot, and we may not have a full catalog of stuff you like, but you'll find one or two totally. that you'll be like, oh, my God, I yeah. love this. Yeah, yeah. Because we've just done so much. Yeah, you kind of genre break, I mean, it's which so is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah. new album, Black Heart Machine, this yeah. is the album release party. Yeah. There's pop on there. Straight up R&B pop. Yeah. Still ra it's still rap, but straight up pop. Yeah. And there's straight up dark, crazy, evil songs. <laughs> there's gangster rap. There's boom bap. Yeah. Um, and there's definitely EDM. Yeah. And it's all hip hop. Yeah. And I've got AWACS on there and only one other feature. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, I've got San Francisco's own Jazz Mafia, which is a jazz collective. Cool. They're producing on there. So there's a live track on there that's a full live band. Wow, that's awesome. Um, yeah. But yeah, man. Like, so, yeah, yeah, that's, that's totally cool. And I, you mentioned something, you, and you talked about the artists are being, you kind of handpicked and curated. I wanted to talk to you about that because of the artistry that you bring. Like your artwork that you, I mean, even like the, the avatar that you have of yourself. Do you know what I mean? Like how much are you in, and your videos are incredible. Even like the earlier ones that were, you know, kind of like weird, like popping around. Those are even more yeah. higher budget. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. like everything you do is like the artistic value that you're producing from video music and then your brand or your persona is very crafted. Like what, so with the art, let's just talk about like the artwork. The one, you know, like it's like the drawing, the illustration, and you're, I don't know, it's like blue and yellow. I don't even know what. It's cool. How much were you involved in like the, the I'm details? I'm fully like, involved in every single aspect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm going to start relinquishing that. I mean, I have here and there, you know, yeah. with certain people. I have great ph photographers, videographers, yeah. you know. Um, but I'm involved in every little detail, all the merch. I mean, we have so much merch and I'm very hands on. Yeah. You know, um, the latest album cover was done by a guy in Sicily, fantastic artist. He does stuff for Elton John, Motley Crue, yeah. even big, just big stuff. Yeah. And uh, I actually scrapped a full album cover. I paid someone from Russia, they did it. It was cool, just wasn't my vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I paid him, yeah. just didn't use it. Yeah. Used this other one and it came out how I wanted. Yeah, so I'm yeah. so grateful, yeah. you know. So you're very much in the weeds. Yeah. And, but, but because you love it, right? I mean, that's the thing, I feel like, I feel like not only are you lyricist, you know, musician, but you're you're like crafting a full experience with your music, you know? Yeah, for sure, man. Uh, the only thing I've I've kind of fully relinquished is the booking. I have an agent, you know. <laughs> yeah, I have an agent in Canada, an agent in, U in yeah. U.S. They're they're actually friends, and yeah. they book for me. So that I'm no longer doing. And yeah. then um, Action Paxton, my drummer engineer, he's taking on more. Yeah. you know, with the actual music side. Yeah. I'd like to get some help on the merch, um, but that's just so hard because I love what I love. Yeah, you know? yeah, that's cool. Um, and where do you buy all your cool glasses? 
That's, ah. what, that's what everybody wants to know. Well, some people ask me and I go, I'm not telling you. <laughs> yeah, right. You know? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's just, fair. That's fair. I have a look that I like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's taken a lot of different ones to really realize, oh, no, I really like like this one I'm wearing now. I have every color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen and them. I love these. You see me with the reds, the yeah, hot yeah. pinks, right? Yeah, yeah. I have yellow of these. Um, yeah. I just find them at boutiques yeah, and yeah. I grab them and then I'll look the number up Yeah. and yeah. I can hunt them down online. I had to buy these in bulk. Oh, really? In order to get them, because nobody sells them. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. and that's I have cool. a, um, a, a girl that's a friend that's, that's um, I think, back east, and she's always looking for me. Oh, yeah. And she's been sending right. me some super fire glasses. Like, yeah. she's like, do you like these? I'm like, yes. Yeah, yeah. And she'll send them. <laughs> My big thing is big square, big circular pink ones, hot yeah, pink, yeah, yeah, magenta. Yeah. I like that. You know? It's cool. Yeah. They're yeah. really cool. <laughs> Are they prescription? No. <laughs> I have great eyesight for now. <laughs> yeah. Although I noticed the TV's getting a little blurry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just comes with age, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I put on some Zoomers. I call them Zoomers, like just generic glasses. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. looked at the TV. I was like, oh. Dang, it's clear. That's what it's supposed to look <laughs> yeah, like. Yeah, right? But yeah, no, no, no prescription. Yeah, 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 yeah that's cool. So good. Um, yeah, so now this new album, what, uh, what's, what are you most proud of, do you think, of this particular oh, album? There's songs on here I can't get enough of. Yeah. And that, I don't like my own music. You know, it just takes a lot to love it. There's songs in every album that I'm like, okay, it's cool. Is that, is that more just because you're perfectionist and you hear it, you're like, ah, oh, we could have done that be- different, or you're so. rethinking it, or, or yeah, what's... I think so. Yeah. I think it's just, I think it could be better. Yeah. So the closer I get to my vision yeah. in the actual final product, the yeah. happier I get. Yeah. This album's a little closer. Yeah. The cool. last album was pretty close. Yeah. So you know? each time These a little... two have been pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm finding a new formula on each. I do full length albums. I'm not like a big EP guy. I've mm. never released an EP. Mm. Um, I find that the last four bounce back and forth to me mm. between overall great album, but no real hits. Then the next one had some songs I didn't like, but some hits. Okay. And so sure. the last four were like that. My Love Bites album, overall unbelievable record. I don't really think there's a hit on there, hmm. my opinion. Yeah. Not one hit. Yeah. The next album, Look Alive, I felt like it had some duds on there pretty bad. Oh, yeah. But biggest, my biggest song is on that album, hmm. you know? Interesting. Then the next album, Come Dawn, I feel like overall it's just a really solid album. It's just probably my best overall album. Yeah. But I feel like Black Heart Machine, the newest album, has the biggest hits. And the worst tracks are still really good. Yeah, and that's so cool. right that final product is getting closer. But yeah, this new album has some songs that definitely I have choked up on stage about ten times on this tour hmm. during the song. Oh yeah, and even thinking about that moment yeah. chokes me up. Even talking to you about it, um, the title track "Black Heart Machine" chokes me up on stage because it's just. The crowd doesn't have to know it. The second they hear it, they go, oh, man. And it's just like everybody's oh, yeah. just yeah. – I, I just see it in them. I yeah. see them connecting to it immediately. Yeah. And I'm connecting to it, and it's synergy. Yeah, that's awesome. That's cool. Yeah. Um, what do you have uh, – like what kind of keeps you going? Like what's your – I always ask people like what's their philosophy of life or what drives you or keeps you – on track like what do you how or i guess the let me ask it better like like your north star the thing that you project with your life i don't know how i'm not, I'm not asking you this very good we gotta start all over i know you're good <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, like you? it's the pursuit of artistic perfection oh yeah i know it may never be reached yeah but i want to reach a pinnacle where my body is like a like a sprinter or bodybuilder my music is undeniable. Okay. The beats, the sound, the light show, the stage show, the mentality, the message between songs, because the songs are always going to have really bad messages and good messages. It's just life. Yeah. But I want to be able to set a tone that up and coming artists and existing artists can look up to of, hey man, you don't have to be a rock star. I'm not into the rock star thing. I'm not into the snobby thing. Um, I'm not into the I'm great thing, just personability, love and respect for what I call listeners and supporters. I don't even call them fans. I think that that's kind of yeah. weird. Sure. Um, and just overall simplifying and creating this kind of um, synergistic way of presenting music, touring the music, travel, everything just being like, wow, yeah. this guy pulled up in a cyber truck. He... The light show was absolutely insane. 
he was bouncing around like an animal for an hour, <laughs> singing four-part harmonies. The songs touched my soul. The bass ripped my heart open. And I'm leaving here with the dopest merch, like, like highest quality merch. Yeah. Holy shit, he just talked to me for 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And gave me a hug and a photo. Yeah. I'm going to go home and sleep really good tonight. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And that's where I'm at. Yeah. I'm not trying to chase the bag. I'm not trying to show up places and get the bag and run like this. I'm just trying to yeah. slow nickel, just trying to slowly chip away at doing something amazing. Yeah, that's cool, right on. What's, uh, what's some advice that you'd give if somebody was looking to get into like the music industry and stuff? Well, if they're starting today, me personally, I wouldn't be a rapper. If I was today, I would have done something different. Really? Real okay. estate or something. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. But when I came out, there wasn't a lot of rappers. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't common at all, right? Um, but my advice to musicians who are struggling is just make sure you love what you're doing. Yeah. Because the chance of you being successful is pretty low. Yeah. It's like football players, like, don't, totally. you know, strive for the NFL. Yeah. But make sure you love playing football. Yeah. Because you're probably not going to make the NFL. Yeah. It's just a percentage thing. I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy. Yeah, no, no, it's true. The yeah. percentage is against you. Yeah. Yeah, you want to be rich, so you buy lottery tickets. Well, the, I'm going to try, I'm here to tell you that the odds are very slim. Yeah. Yeah. So just make sure you put out a few songs, a few music videos that you absolutely are proud of. Because even if you fail your attempt to become, because a lot of people now want to be famous. Right. Totally. I, that's not what I care about. Okay. So I would tell if, if your goal, if you're coming out now, your goal is most likely to be famous. Yeah. Just know that that's probably not going to happen. It, it, there's a good chance it could happen, right. but probably not. Yeah. And um, I mean, I've been at it 23 years and there's right. people in the comment section going, who? Who? Yeah, sure. And they live in San Jose. Yeah. yeah. You haven't heard of me you live in San Jose? Yeah. Okay. I understand. I'm not, like we said, I'm not playing every yeah. coffee shop, so I get it. But... Just make sure you put a video or two or three out yeah. and songs that you go, oh. Yeah, that you personally. I can quit today. Yeah. This is a masterpiece. Yeah, yeah. Just start there. Yeah. You know, because I, cool. I don't want to give business advice because it's going to change in two weeks. The <laughs> yeah, algorithm's right. changing. This, everything's changing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, whatever you do, don't just create content to create content. That's some advice right there. Don't yeah. do that. Yeah. Because you get a video that has 20 million views. It's not going to do anything for you. I've had a video go viral right. that was not related to music. It did nothing for me. Right. Yeah. I actually met one girl. <laughs> she's really hot, really cool, and I'm talking to her. <laughs> and she's my friend. So yeah. that's all it did. And it yeah. got... 12 million views, yeah. 125,000 shares. I mean, insane oh, yeah. numbers. Right, right. And it did but nothing, didn't translate for, did nothing to, to me. Yeah, me. like to be in the YouTube cash cow. It did nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So just make sure you have an alternative and make sure your motive is creation, is good content. Yeah, you know? awesome. Well, I have to say, I really admire the creation that you're doing, not only with the music, like I said, but the whole, like your album covers, the artwork, the production, the shows, everything is like pretty amazing and I, was, I have to say too it was pretty interesting when i first came up saw you um uh, out there was with the full-on paint and everything oh, wow. like that i didn't know you saw me back then. and then i was like man we got to do a well it was, and then when i was like we got to do a story on like, who is this mysterious guy and then i met you i don't know where we maybe it was just when you had the when you did the interview with me right we did yeah we did yeah yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Right? and i was like this is so i had expected I don't even know what you I was expected. You expected the Dark Lord to show up. Right, yeah, totally. Like, And to kind of be like, you know, like that kind of stuff. <laughs> but it was kind of cool to see, like, oh, there's a... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I really appreciate what you're doing. Well, I'm, I'm a, of a fan of content and right, you thanks. and your photography. I um, I only tag a few people and stuff, and you're one of them. <laughs> well, so thanks. you see that tag? I'm not much of a spammer type. Yeah. I only tag you, San Jose rappers, and a few other accounts that I love and respect, yeah. like San Jose Foos that are the homies. And yeah. so... Yeah. Thank you, man. That's cool. Yeah, being, good. Thank you for awesome. perpetuating and still doing print mag. Yeah, right. And when, when when we're ready and you want to get me on the cover, I'll do the emperor thing for you. I yeah, will shave yeah. the dome and we'll take some – because I don't <laughs> think we've done a high, high, high quality shoot because that was so long ago. Yeah, Imagine yeah, yeah. a new shoot like that. Yeah, that would be crazy. Be well, wild. I love what you do, and I love what you guys did, even to promote the show at the Ritz. It looks great. Hey, we took everything. those photos in the middle of the street on right. a Friday. Yeah, that's you awesome. Yeah, that's good. Blocking traffic. So this Friday is the show, Friday the 14th of July. The 14th of July, yeah, yeah. 8 o'clock. What time are you going? 8 o'clock. We, everybody wants to we be want, there for everybody. Yeah, I, you need to be there for everybody because there's only three artists. Yeah. It's gonna. They're they're phenomenal. Yeah. Again, Chow Man, good Cola, Yo Is, great guys. They're great performers, great yeah. music. Um, get there at 8. Yeah. Come early so you can chit chat, 
the house is going to be filled with creators. Yes, there's awesome. going to be famous movie directors there, actors, musicians, ballers, content guys. Hopefully you can make it. Just pop out. If you want to just see me, that's fine. But <laughs> I'm on pretty early, so just get there at 8. You know what I mean? There's going to be a huge variety yeah. from 21 to 51-year-old people. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. There's no dress code, but it's 21 and up. Come Maybe I'll bring time. out my Fu Manchu uh, Oh, people would love you for that. There will be some people with painted faces. Yeah, There'll yeah, be yeah. some people with masks. There'll yeah. be some, I know a couple ratchet girls that are going to be dressed super sc- scantily clad. Is that the right word? Yeah, I guess that's They're going to be dressed like hoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just know how they roll. And uh, there, so there'll be some fun things to look at. Yeah, you know yeah, what it's I mean? going to be awesome. But nobody, you come to a Kung Fu Vampire show, you're not going to be uncomfortable. The Chinese and Vietnamese community will be there. The yeah. Latin community, the Guamanian community will be there. Yeah. The Foos community. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's the thing. Is that, and that's what I think that you really kind of encompass that mixed genre, right, of the San Jose experience, right, with your music. It's like it's not really this. It's not really that. But it is. It's a little bit everything. All those, yeah. which is it's, great. It's, yeah. it's, uh, and it's cool. not a San Jose sound. I don't have a San Jose sound. Yeah. It's just kind of its own thing. You yeah. Know? Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you, and we'll uh, see you on Friday. Thanks for coming out awesome. and doing this. I really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Cool. All right. So make sure you check out Kung Fu Vampire this Friday at the Ritz. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the Content Magazine podcast. Follow us on social media at Content Mag. Become a member and help us to continue to tell the stories of the South Bay creatives. This episode's music is 408 by Jack Pavlina. Follow him on Spotify and also on his Instagram at Jack Pavlina Music. <laughs>